In football, they say, it's the hope that kills you. And that was certainly true for the fans of Jamaica Reggae Boys this week. They were less than 10 minutes away from celebrating a famous win over Mexico. From their homes, mind you. Before two late late goals all but ended any faint hope the team had of qualifying for this edition of the FIFA World Cup. How has such a promising campaign gone so badly off the rails? Hello and welcome to another edition of In Case You Missed It. This week we take a closer look at what's been a tough campaign so far for Jamaica's Reggae Boys. The only Caribbean team to make the final round of the World Cup qualifiers. There was plenty of optimism in early assessments of Jamaica's chances to get back to the FIFA World Cup for the first time in 24 years and rightly so. Heading into the final round, the team was ranked at 45th third best in CONCACAF behind Mexico and the United States. In fact, the boys seemed on the verge of a major breakthrough after getting to the finals of the Gold Cup twice in recent years and consistently proving challengers to CONCACAF's Big Two. Through scouting, the team also seemed set to add top-class talent from the England diaspora which included the likes of West Ham's Mikel Antonio and former Manchester United youth standout Ravel Morrison, among others. All those things seemed pointed to a team taxing down the runway for takeoff, one ready to not only challenge for a spot at the World Cup, but maybe even the top spot. As we know now, that's not quite what happened. Even now, looking at the Jamaica squad on paper, it's hard to see why they aren't, at this point, serious contenders for Qatar. As we all know, football isn't played on paper, is it? And I can think of a few obvious reasons the team hasn't lived up to its potential. Here are three. Theodore Whitmore is an experienced coach and has shown his quality plenty of times for the national team but he seemed to struggle to blend the talent he had available with the influx of newly acquired talent from the England leagues into a cohesive unit. The boys often looked like a jaggedly assembled collection of talent rather than a well-oiled unit. It has continued to show in their attacking play. At times, a few of Whitmore's starting 11 and substitution selections were highly questionable. Perhaps he needed more time and games to pull the squad together. That being said, and I know I've said this before, the decision by the JFF to fire Whitmore at this point in the campaign may not have been the best choice. So far, things do not seem a lot better. Most look to the field, but the Jamaica Football Federation certainly has to shoulder some of the blame for the current state of affairs. The protracted dispute over wage demands with the qualifiers just a few months away was not a good look. Nor did suggestions that suggested those who did not want to play for what was offered would simply be replaced by talent abroad. All that would have done is to inflame already existing tensions between locally born players and those coming in from the diaspora. With the wealth of talent available for selection in the Federation, they must find a way to either refine the method or messaging surrounding the use of talented Jamaican players born abroad. With a golf in class between those leagues and our local one, it continues to remain a sensible and viable option. Of course, we can also point to other instances where poorly thought out travel arrangements did some damage. Star striker Mikhail Antonio missing three games due to a messaging error are other instances where the management team just has not got things right. We don't have to tell anyone about the impact of COVID-19 as we have all felt its sting one way or the other. But the Reggae Boys were the only team in the final round of the qualifiers that were consistently forced to play in front of an empty stadium. With fans often referred to as the 12th man, the team in effect played home games a man down. Imagine the impact of having at least some fans in the stadium as a tired team, already a man down, desperately fought to hold on to a 1-0 lead at the National Stadium on Thursday. 
it's hard to blame anyone in particular for this one. It's easy to say that the government could have been more lenient in this regard as many others have. At the same time, we remain in the grips of a pandemic and the country's vaccination rate is certainly not what it should be. Well, thank you for joining me for another episode of In Case You Missed It. I encourage you to like, share and comment because I really look forward to hearing what you think about this week's episode. Bye for now. Stay safe. See you soon.